Sadly, overweight and obesity is becoming more common across the world, and in fact in many countries it's overtaking tobacco as the leading cause of ill health because we are managing to get uh, tobacco control measures in place. The reasons for that are largely that food is incredibly available, it's often in very large portions, and it's sold at relatively cheap prices. And all of those things in a way are wonderful, but they've conspired into a perfect storm, which means that the chances of people over-consuming are very, very high indeed. The reason I really worry about obesity is because we know it's such a serious risk factor for so many chronic diseases. Of course, diabetes in particular, but also high blood pressure, many different kinds of cancer, and other conditions which relate just to the mechanical strain obesity puts on the body. So things like knee replacements are much more common in people who are seriously overweight. Of course, the problem of that is that it's putting a real strain on healthcare resources. Um, but in addition, it's costing the wider economy because people are taking time off work, they're less economically productive. And so obesity really is acting as a drag on the whole economy. If we look right across Europe, we see that rates of obesity are all increasing. But I think it is interesting that the rate of increase is very different in different places. So for example, if you go back 20 years or so, you see that the prevalence of obesity was pretty similar in the UK and the Netherlands, but actually in the UK it's now twice that that we see in the Netherlands. We don't really fully understand the reasons for those big, big differences, but it probably comes down to a combination of differences in overall lifestyle, how physically active people are, how um, accessible towns and cities are for people to walk and cycle, for example. But it's also probably about differences in, in eating behaviour. And some countries like France have managed to hang on to a much more established traditional way of eating, much stronger meal eating culture, um, and have perhaps resisted the rise of, of fast food and grazing um, in a way that some countries like the UK have not. I think science has a huge amount to offer in terms of helping us all to achieve a healthier diet. That's not just about ensuring that the public have access to really good, high quality evidence and information about what constitutes a healthy diet. But it's also about talking to industry um, about the kinds of products that we need to give us a really healthy and sustainable food supply. So companies are you know, always looking to innovate and we need to make sure that that innovation is based on the best quality science. And of course we need to talk to policymakers too, because if we want to change the food system, we need some real leadership and good governance um, uh, from, from our policymakers. But they need to know what are the precise interventions which are going to make the biggest difference. It's very easy for scientists to call for something must be done, but what's much more important is that we identify rather precisely what exactly is it that we want policymakers to do, and that needs evidence. I think that from the evidence that we have already, there are some really key areas where we could take far more action. So for example, we know that uh, nutritional labelling helps people to make healthier choices. And we know it also encourages food companies to ensure their products have as healthy a label as is, as is possible. The other area where we know governments can make a difference is thinking about uh, the way we tax foods. We've seen that more than 28 countries around the world have now introduced taxes on sugar-sweetened beverages, and we know that that has a direct impact on sales, as well, of course, as sending out our general message to consumers that these are not particularly healthy products. The area where I think the evidence is growing, but where we've seen much less policy action, concerns advertising and promotion of foods, particularly to children. We know that the advertisements that children see, whether that's on television or on billboards, really do shape their preferences um, around food. And so I think if we want to look at areas where there's opportunities for policy, it has to be around better controls over the advertising and marketing of foods.